Good morning, everybody. Let's stand and join together in singing through it all. trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon God's Word. Good morning. How are y'all today? Excellent, excellent. We will begin our worship in prayer this morning. You will find the opening prayer in your bulletin uh, if you would pray with me in unison. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I want to take the time to thank you this morning for coming to worship with us today at Grace United Methodist. Uh, we do hope that this is a blessing to you. Uh, we do have a few announcements that I want to bring your attention to. On August the 22nd, we have the blessing of the backpacks for all students. That will be right here at 1045 if you have a student or a backpack, or a combination of the two that you would like to be blessed, uh, please bring those. Uh, and then that afternoon at 1 to 3 at the Lambright Intramural Center at the gym, uh, we'll have a back-to-school bash for all students, families, the community, whoever. You come up there, swim, we'll have some refreshments, just have a good time and fellowship with one another. And so we would love to see you there uh, for that. So uh, all the other announcements are on the back of your bulletin. I will also make a plug that there are uh, physical copies of a newsletter that are available out in the foyer if you want to grab that. If you're an email person, uh, please sign on this sheet right here, this nifty little perforated edge uh, that we have that you want to sign up for the e-newsletter so we can keep you tuned in on all the things that are happening here at Grace. And then if you're already signed up for the newsletter, in addition to that, we just ask that you would sign the perforated edge, put it in the offering plate so we can let you know you're let us know that you are here. That's how we keep attendance, and we appreciate you in advance for that. Let's continue in worship this morning. Uh, if we sing to God, O oh God, our help in ages past, number 117. Please stand.
you would remain standing and join in our affirmation of faith today, it will come from Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 35, and then 37 through 39 is what it's based off of. It is number 887 in your hymnal. It's also found on the screen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. no. In all things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. As Nick has mentioned, we are glad to have you with us here at Grace today. So whether you are watching us online or whether you're worshiping with us in person, we are so grateful for you taking some of your time to worship God with us this morning. As we come to a time of prayer in our worship service, I would remind you of the names that are listed on the back of your bulletin. I would also like to encourage you to take your bulletin home with you and continue to pray for those folks throughout the week. We do have a couple of joys. We want to say happy birthday to Mildred McGee and Gary Teague. So if you see them today, be sure to wish them a happy birthday um, and a wonderful week. I also have um, some special prayer requests that I want to mention as in addition to these. Uh, we want to um, begin to pray for our students and teachers as that back to school time is nearing. And so I hope that you will put that on your prayer request list. Also, Jana had a former student in Winfield whose mother was killed in a tragic accident this week, and so I'd ask your prayers for the Parker family as they deal with that loss. We also want to continue to pray for um, all of our police and fire folks and that serve and protect us, our first responders, so I know we want to, to tell them how much we appreciate all that they do as well as pray for them and their, and their work also. So those are before you. Are there others you'd like to mention? By the way, on the back of your insert, if there's someone you'd like to add to our list, you can do so and just um, put that name down and tell us a little bit about what's going on, and we will put that on our prayer request list and just drop it in the offering. There's also a basket in the foyer if you miss the offering plate. So are there others that we need to mention this morning that are in need of our prayers? Let us go to God in prayer. Oh, Lord, we are so grateful for the, the, that you are with us today. Lord, whether we're watching online or whether we are in person in your house, Lord, we ask that you would come into our place, into our space, and move among us. Lord, we open ourselves to you. We pray that you would give us eyes to see you, ears to hear you, and hearts to respond. And so, Lord... We invite your Holy Spirit into this place to lead us and guide us. And we pray that we would be open to what you have to say to us today. Lord, as we think about all that you have done in the life of Abram, we are amazed. And, and now Abram decides in our scripture today that maybe he wants to help you a little bit. And it ends up being almost disastrous. And he tries to take a shortcut. So, Lord, forgive us when we try to take shortcuts in our lives when maybe we, we don't want to put in the hard work and we don't want to put in the, the, we know it's going to be painful and difficult. And Lord, we say, well, maybe there's a way around this. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be willing to put in the work that needs to be done in our lives, in our church, 
And Lord, even in our faith life, to stay connected to you. And we, we pray that you would help us to learn from Abram's experience today. Lord, as we gather in your house this morning, we are grateful for your many blessings. The blessings of birthdays, of friends and family, the blessings of being able to gather here freely. Lord, we are so grateful for all those many blessings. We also are mindful of the needs that are all around us. We continue to pray for our students and teachers as they prepare for back to school. We pray for so many that are sick. Maybe they are sick with the virus. Maybe they are exposed. Maybe maybe they're just under the weather for a number of different reasons. And so, Lord, we, we pray that your healing touch would be upon all those that are sick and ill. We also remember all those who have lost a loved one to death, and we pray your comfort and your peace that passes understanding would be with them. And Lord, as we gather today or as we watch online, Lord, we may have other worries and concerns on our hearts and minds. Maybe it is about work or about school or friends or family. But Lord, whatever it is, we know that you are with us, for you have promised to never leave us or forsake us. And it is all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as our ushers come to receive our offering, would you pray with me this morning? Oh Lord, we are so grateful for the many blessings that you have given us. Lord, we are so grateful for the blessing of gathering here in your house today, watching online. Lord, we are so grateful for all that you've done for us. And so now, Lord, as we give you back a portion of what you've given us, we ask your blessings on these gifts that we give, and we pray that others might know the good news of Jesus Christ through them. And it's all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
be seated.
And thank you very much, Sherry, for coming and leading us in worship this morning. Well, if you have been here over the last couple of weeks, we have been working our way through a fellow named Abram's life, beginning in Genesis chapter 12, and today we come through to Genesis chapter 16, that Abram was this man who God came to and said, Abram, I want you to go into a, to a place, to another place, and I'm going to lead you there. And, and Abram didn't know exactly where he was going, and he had some ups and downs along the way, as we will see in our scripture today from Genesis chapter 16. I'll be reading from Genesis chapter 16. I'll be reading the entire chapter, verses 1 through 16. So it's a little long, so stick with me. I'll be reading from the New International Version, if, version and if you'd like to follow along, you'll find it on page 20 in your pew Bible. I believe the words will also be on the screen. So I invite you to hear the word of the Lord this morning from the book of Genesis. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan ten years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian maidservant Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my servant in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your servant is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert, and it was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now with child and you will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. He will live in hostility toward all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Beir Lahai Roy. It is still there between Kadesh and Barad. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had born. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Bob Harris was a weatherman, weatherman for New York television station WPIX-TV, and he had to weather a storm of his own making in 1979. Though he had studied math, physics, and geology at three colleges, he left school without a degree, but he still had a strong desire to be a media weatherman. So he phoned WCBS-TV, falsely introducing himself as a PhD candidate in geophysics from Columbia U. The phony degree got him in the door at the television station. After a two-month tryout, he was hired as an off-camera forecaster for WCBS. And then for the next decade, his career flourished. He became known as Dr. Bob. He was even hired by the New York Times as a consulting meteorologist. But at 40 years of age and living his childhood dream, he found himself in public disgrace and national humiliation when an anonymous letter prompted WCBS management to investigate his academic credentials. Both the station and the New York Times 
fired him. His story got attention all across the country. He was on the Today Show, the Tomorrow Show, and in People Weekly, among others. He thought he'd lose his home and never work in the media again. Then WNEW-TV gave him a job. But Bob still admits it was a dreadful mistake on his part and doubtless played a role role in his divorce. This is what he says. I took a shortcut that turned out to be the long way around, and one day the bill came due. I will be sorry as long as I am alive. The truth is that there are no shortcuts in some of the most important aspects of life. Fabricating or stretching the truth has on one's resume has cost several public figures, not just Bob Harris. I'm told that today you can go to a website and you can buy a term paper to turn into your professor, which is, of course, plagiarism, one of the highest academic crimes. Even pastors are tempted to to go and to do a search and to to download or to find someone else's sermon and preach it as their own. And Dr. Smith, I want you to know that I have I I have resources. <laughs> I document all of my sources, so I, I'm good. I'm good there. But the truth is that we love shortcuts that they can save us time and money. I am already learning some of the shortcuts through Ruston to avoid those infernal I-20 service roads, especially when everyone is trying to go to Chick-fil-A or Raising Cane's and they all seem to go at exactly the same time. I can't exactly figure it out. But taking shortcuts in some areas of life can be costly. Cheating on a test may result in an A score for a student. But what happens when they need that skill to solve a math problem or to write a paper? Or we could ask the Ruston or Cedar Creek football teams, Louisiana Tech, LSU, or even the Saints as they sweat out practice under a hot August sun preparing for football season. There are no shortcuts with that work to be done. And as I have watched the Olympics over the last few weeks that are ending today, I I thought how many hours and days and months and years of training went into a competition that could last only a few moments. There are no shortcuts for many things in life, and that includes our faith in God. Now, last week we saw Abram at his very best. Believing God despite his anxiety about the future, the scripture says that that Abram believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. But here in chapter 16, Abram's faith goes downhill one more time. One of the things that I love most about the Bible is that there is no whitewashing, no glossing over the sin or the failures, just the plain unadulterated truth about both the successes and the failures of its characters and heroes. I mean, I remember when I was young in Sunday school and we were singing about Father Abraham and and Father Abraham and many sons, many sons and Father Abraham. and, And here we see Abram not at his best, but maybe at his worst. We can learn from both the successes and the failures of these biblical characters. So today in this passage of scripture, Abram and Sarai attempt an unholy shortcut in order to obtain the long desired promise from God, a long awaited son. It is hard to believe that a man with such great faith as Abram to walk into the unknown with God who was called a friend of God could be guilty of such faithless conduct. As we read about in our text, it is almost scandalous when we really stop and think about what happens in this text. But the Bible paints the picture of a man who tries to take a shortcut and the results are nearly disastrous. So here's a few ideas for you this morning that we can learn from Abram when we are tempted to take a shortcut. First, we are tempted to take a shortcut when we think our problem is bigger than God. Sometimes we are tempted to take a shortcut when we think our problem is bigger than God. 
So Abram and Sarai, they're looking at the calendar and they say, well, we have been in Canaan 10 years now. God has given this promise to us many years ago and we still don't have a child. And so they decided that it would be a good idea to try to help God out. Sarai comes up with a plan. Have a child through her Egyptian slave by the name of Hagar. Now today, that would be a scandalous plan for us, but in those days, it was a perfectly legal plan. It was even a culturally acceptable plan in the society in which they lived. But it was not God's plan. I couldn't help but wonder how often do we treat God like our problems are too big for God. How often do we head into projects and into the decisions without giving the proper time to pray about it and ask God's guidance in all of our decisions? How often do we use God as a last resort when things are headed downhill instead of turning to God in the very first place? How often is it only when we come to the end of ourself do we turn to God and say, hey God, I could use a little help here. And if God doesn't start opening the doors of opportunity for us, soon we take out the battering ram and we force the doors open and say, I'm going to make it happen one way or the other. The truth is that God's timing is not the same as ours. Sarah and Abram, they were getting frustrated waiting, so they said, well, if God isn't going to do it, then we're going to do it. Plan B is in effect. The great New England preacher Philip Brooks was noted for his poise and his quiet manner. But at times, however, he suffered moments of frustration and irritability. One day a friend saw Dr. Brooks pacing the floor like a caged lion. What is wrong with you, Dr. Brooks? asked the friend. The trouble is that I am in a hurry, replied Dr. Brooks but God is not. Maybe we have felt the same way, yet patience is part of God's strategy for maturing us as Christians. It's a difficult skill that we all need to cultivate. It's easy to become impatient. It's hard to wait on God. And we say, God, why aren't you working the way that I want you to work? Why aren't you working in my time instead of in your time? So if you are waiting for God to act, and if you are wondering what is taking God so long, then don't take the shortcut that Abram and Sarai took and think that your problems are too big for God. Secondly, we are tempted to take a shortcut when we fail to consider the consequences. When we fail to consider the consequences. So one mistake leads to another. One lie leads to another lie to cover up the lie that was already spoken. And because they couldn't wait for God, because they thought their problems were bigger than God, Abram and Sarai, they didn't take time to consider the consequences that their decisions could make. So maybe you still think that looking ahead is not really that important and that disobeying God is not really that big of a deal. Maybe you think that your mistakes are your mistakes only and that they don't have an impact on others around you or even on the world. But this scripture clearly shows us that Abram, Sarai's, and Hagar's mistakes would have lasting consequences. And isn't that the way that it goes, right? That one simple decision leads us down a path that we never intended to go. So after Hagar becomes pregnant, conflict arises between Hagar and Sarah. But I want to direct our attention to verses 10 through 12. And, and here, Hagar's son, Ishmael, is described. Now, it might have seemed like a good idea for Abram to have a son by Hagar. After all, Sarah was old. It was Sarah's idea. And, and they said, well, let's try this. But they obviously didn't stop to think about the consequences. Now, I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard about a little thing on the news about conflict in the Middle East between the Israelites and the Arabs. 
It's occasionally on the news. Maybe you've heard it, or maybe if you've been to that part of the world, you know that it's still a thing even today. This is where it started, all the way back here in Genesis chapter 16. That God's promise is that Ishmael would be the father of a great nation. It would be those Arab nations who are constantly opposing Israel even still today. So this one decision by Abram and Sarai has fueled controversy and fueled fighting in the Middle East for centuries. There are always consequences when we fail to consider the implications of our decisions. I heard about an 18-year-old teenager who lived in Philadelphia. He received 440 speeding tickets. He faces possible fines of up to $88,000, six years in prison, and a lifetime ban on driving. So in just a few years behind the wheel, this Philadelphia flyer has racked up 143 tickets for driving without a license, 92 for failing to register his car, 72 for not having his automobile inspected, 12 for driving without insurance, and even more. So at 18, this guy has already put himself into a deep pothole. So we might kind of shake our head at this young man who has no respect for the rules of the road and the rules of society. But so often we are in the same situation with God. That we continue to make mistakes that have lasting effects on our families and our children and all of the people around us. Yes, God forgives us when we sin. All we have to do is ask. But notice also that Abram was forgiven for this mistake. Yet the consequences remain with us even to this day. So whenever we watch the news and we see what's going on in the Middle East and the conflict that is there, it should be a reminder to us of the consequences that often stick around when we are tempted to take a shortcut. So, yes, when we sin against God, we can have forgiveness. But the consequences of that choice can remain a long, long time. So we are tempted to take a shortcut when we fail to consider the consequences of our decisions. Lastly, thirdly, I want you to see that we are tempted to take a shortcut when we blame others instead of taking responsibilities. When we blame others instead of taking responsibilities. I hope you noticed the soap opera that, went play, went, went, that took place here in Genesis 16, right? So, so Sarai says, okay, well, sleep with my slave, Hagar, and then Hagar gets pregnant, and then Hagar begins to look down on Sarah, and there becomes a whole conflict. Sarai becomes angry with Hagar for doing something that was her idea. And as a slave, her options are limited. She could not say no very well or very safely or very gracefully. And Abram is caught in the middle between these two women and their catty, jealous, envious relationship. That they blame one another for their problems. And isn't that the case for us? That we tend to look to everyone else but ourselves to blame. I heard about um, several college students who, who um, played a joke on a fraternity brother and they placed Limburger cheese on the upper lip of him one night while he was sleeping. Upon awaking, the young man sniffed and looked around and said, this room stinks. He then walked into the hall and said, this hall stinks. Leaving the dormitory, he exclaimed, the whole wide world stinks. Of course, we know that the problem was not with the room or the hall or the world, but with himself. But isn't that just like us, that we try to find fault outside of ourselves with others to shift the blame from ourselves? Maybe if apologies had been made, maybe if forgiveness had been offered, then a different resolution and a different outcome could have been reached. But because of the finger pointing and the bad mouthing, the, sing the situation only gets worse instead of getting better. So we are tempted to take a shortcut 
when we blame others instead of accepting our own responsibility. <clears throat> Lastly, I want you to see we are tempted to take a shortcut when we run away. We are tempted to take a shortcut when we run away. So Hagar decides that leaving is the best option, that Sarai is mistreating her and, and Hagar leaves. Now notice that Abram does not send out a search committee to find Hagar and who is pregnant with his child. And notice that Sarah was not pleading with him to gather up some folks to go and look for her. And it wasn't that Abram didn't have people around him to help, that just a few weeks ago he had gathered over 300 people to go and rescue Lot when Lot was in trouble. But with Hagar, Abram seems to come up empty when she needs help the most. But Hagar discovered that while Abram will let her down, God will not. God finds her and her son in an abandoned place. In fact, Hagar calls God El Roy, the God who sees. Isn't that just like God? That God is the God who sees us in our distress. God is the God who sees us when we try to run away. God is the God who sees us in our trouble. God is the God who sees us in the midst of our problems that we have created for ourselves. Notice God's counsel. Go home and make peace with your mistress. Running away doesn't solve our problems. In fact, it may only add to them. The story is told of two hunters who came across a bear so big that they dropped their rifles and ran for cover. Well, one man climbed a tree and the other man ran into a nearby cave. The bear sat down between the tree and the cave. Suddenly, the hunter in the cave came rushing out, almost running into the waiting bear, hesitated and dashed back in. The same thing happened a second time. And when it happened the third time, his friend in the tree frantically called out, Woody, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Stay in the cave until the bear leaves. I can't, panted Woody. There's another bear in the cave. You see, whenever we run away from one problem, often we face problems that are worse. Or the problems simply add up rather than going away. Yes, Hagar's situation with Sarai wasn't great, but she had a place to live, she had food to eat, she was able to take care for herself and her child that was coming. When she ran away, she had none of those things, placing her and her child in grave danger. Running away only led to bigger problems. Running away from our problems is not a shortcut. So Abram, Sarai, and Hagar, they discovered the hard way that there are no shortcuts in life or in faith. So it is for us, if we want to grow as a church, as a community, as individuals, we must pay the price. Whether it's on the football field for band practice or football practice, or whether it's at home doing our homework, or, or whether it's doing a little extra at the office. There are no shortcuts in life. And so we must remember this story when we are tempted to take shortcuts. When we, are, when we believe that our problems are bigger than God. That there are no shortcuts when we fail to consider the consequences. No shortcuts when we blame others instead of accepting responsibility. No shortcuts when we try to run away from our problems. But the good news for us is that when we are tempted to take shortcut, God is the one who sees us and helps us. So next time, I hope you'll learn from this story in Genesis 16 that instead of taking a shortcut, what we can do is we can look to God for help and hope and guidance and wisdom. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we are challenged by this scripture challenged by this man who was your man, your chosen man, a great man of faith, and yet, Lord, sometimes he made some questionable choices. We have been there also. Maybe like Abram, we have been tempted to take some shortcuts in life, and we think, well, well Lord, it won't be that big of a deal.
But Lord, sometimes those shortcuts can lead us into trouble just like it did for Abram. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us to learn from this scripture in Genesis, Genesis 16. We pray that you would help us to remember that our problems are never bigger than you, that you are always there to help us. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to think about the consequences of our decisions, not only now, but for our family and friends and on into the future. Help us to accept responsibility for our own mistakes instead of wanting to blame others. And Lord, help us to not run away from our problems, instead to take them on face and on their face on and, and to face them. Lord, we are so grateful that no matter what challenges we face, that you are the God who sees us, the God who loves us and cares for us, who leads us and guides us each and every day. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us not to take shortcuts, but to look to you for guidance and wisdom and in all that we do. And as these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we come to a time of response in our service today, I want to remind you that the altar is open if you would like to come and pray. I'll be glad to pray with you if you'd like for me to do so. Maybe like Abram and Sarai and Hagar, we've been tempted to take some shortcuts in our life. And maybe we need God's help to lead us and guide us. I'd also be glad to talk with you if you'd like to know more about trusting in Christ as your Lord and Savior or to become a member of our church here at Grace as we seek to follow Jesus. I guess I have eaten my bulletin. What's the closing hymn, Gary? 454, open my eyes. Oh, 454. Would you stand as we sing, open my eyes that I may see the number 454. been good to see you in God's house today. We thank you for worshiping with us. Maybe you're worshiping online or you're with us in person. We are so grateful that you have joined us today. I do want to remind you as you leave that we will have um, invite cards for you that you can take and invite some of your friends or family or maybe put them at your place of business or leave them with your tip at a local restaurant. I'm going to have some of those with me at the door so that, that you can take those with you and give them out. They don't do us any good sitting on a shelf, that not one person is going to come to God's house while our, those cards are sitting on a shelf. So I'd like for you to take them and to give them out and to invite folks to come to church. We'll be starting a special Back to Church series in September, and Nick is going to lead that on September 5th, and so I'm really excited about that, and I hope that you will join us. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. Let us close in prayer. O oh Lord, we are so grateful that you are with us, that you have promised to never leave us or forsake us. 
We pray that you would forgive us when we think that our problems are bigger than you and we are tempted to take a shortcut. Lord, help us to remember the consequences that come from our choices. And, but Lord, we are always so grateful that you are the God who sees us, sees us in our time of distress, sees us in our struggle, sees us even on the good days. And so, Lord, we, since you see us and know us, we pray that you would go with us. And as we go into our week, we pray that others would see Jesus in us through the things that we do and say. And it's all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.